Hindu philosophy refers to a group of darsanas philosophies, world views, teachings that emerged in ancient India. These include six systems Siddharsana, Sankhya, Yoga, Naya, Vaisheshika, Mimamsa and Vedanta. These are also called the Astaka orthodox philosophical traditions and are those that accept the Vedas as authoritative, important source of knowledge. Ancient and medieval India was also the source of philosophies that share philosophical concepts but rejected the Vedas, and these have been called Nastika heterodox or non-orthodox Indian philosophies. Nastika Indian philosophies include Buddhism, Jainism, Karvaka, Ahivika, and others. Scholars have debated the relationship and differences within Astika philosophies and with Nastika philosophies, starting with the writings of Indologists and Orientalists of the 18th and 19th centuries, which were themselves derived from limited availability of Indian literature and medieval doxographies. The various sibling traditions included in Hindu philosophies are diverse, and they are united by shared history and concepts, same textual resources, similar ontological and soteriological focus, and cosmology. While Buddhism and Jainism are considered distinct philosophies and religions, some heterodox traditions such as Karvaka are often considered as distinct schools within Hindu philosophy. Hindu philosophy also includes several sub schools of theistic philosophies that integrate ideas from two or more of the six orthodox philosophies, such as the realism of the Naya, the naturalism of the Vaisesika, the dualism of the Sankhya, the monism and knowledge of self as essential to liberation of Advaita, the self discipline of yoga, and the asceticism and elements of theistic ideas. Examples of such schools include Pasupatha Seva, Seva Siddhanta, Pratyabhijna, Rezasvara and Vaisnava. Some sub-schools share tantric ideas with those found in some Buddhist traditions. The ideas of these sub-schools are found in the Puranas and Agamas. Each school of Hindu philosophy has extensive epistemological literature called Pramanasastras, as well as theories on metaphysics, axiology, and other topics. Topic. Classifications In the history of Hinduism, the six orthodox schools had emerged before the start of the Common Era. Some scholars have questioned whether the orthodox and heterodox schools' classification is sufficient or accurate, given the diversity and evolution of views within each major school of Hindu philosophy, with some sub-schools combining heterodox and orthodox views. Since ancient times Indian philosophy has been categorized into astika and nastika schools of thought. The orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy have been called siddharsana, six systems. This schema was created between the 12th and 16th centuries by Vedantins. It was then adopted by the early Western Indologists, and pervades modern understandings of Hindu philosophy. <laughs> Astika There are six Astika orthodox schools of thought. Each is called a darsana, and each darsana accepts the Vedas as authoritative and the premise that Atman soul, eternal self, exists. The Astika schools are Samkhya, an atheistic and strongly dualist theoretical exposition of consciousness and matter. Yoga, a school emphasizing meditation, contemplation and liberation. Naya or logic, which explores sources of knowledge. Naya sutras. Vaisesika, an empiricist school of atomism. Mimamsa, an anti-ascetic and anti-mysticist school of orthopraxy. Vedanta, the last segment of knowledge in the Vedas, or Jnanakanda. Vedanta came to be the dominant current of Hinduism in the post-medieval period. <laughs> Nastika Schools that do not accept the authority of the Vedas are Nastika philosophies, of which four Nastika heterodox schools are prominent. Karvaka, a materialism school that accepted the existence of free will. Ahivika, a materialism school that denied the existence of free will. Buddhism, a philosophy that denies existence of Atman soul, self, and is based on the teachings and enlightenment of Gautama Buddha. Jainism, a philosophy that accepts the existence of the Atman soul, self, and is based on the teachings and enlightenment of 24 teachers known as Tirthankaras, with Rishabha as the first and Mahavira as the 24th. Other schools Besides the major orthodox and non-orthodox schools, there have existed syncretic sub-schools that have combined ideas and introduced new ones of their own. 
The medieval scholar Madhva Acharya includes the following, along with Buddhism and Jainism, as sub-schools of Hindu philosophy Pashapada Shaivism, developed by Nakalisa Shaiva Siddhanta, the theistic Sankhya school Pratyabhijña, the recognitive school of Kashmir Shaivism, Trika Raisasvara, a Shaiva school that advocated the use of mercury to reach immortality The Ramanuja school the Purnaprajna school The Paniniyatha above sub-schools introduced their own ideas while adopting concepts from orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy such as realism of the Naya, naturalism of Vicesika, monism and knowledge of self as essential to liberation of Advaita, self-discipline of Yoga, asceticism and elements of theistic ideas. Some sub-schools share tantric ideas with those found in some Buddhist traditions. Characteristics Overview Epistemology Epistemology is called pramana. It has been a key, much debated field of study in Hinduism since ancient times. Pramana is a Hindu theory of knowledge and discusses means by which human beings gain accurate knowledge. The focus of pramana is how correct knowledge can be acquired, how one knows, how one doesn't, and to what extent knowledge pertinent about someone or something can be acquired. Ancient and medieval Hindu texts identify six pramanas as correct means of accurate knowledge and truths: pratyaksa (perception), anumana (inference), upamana (comparison and analogy), arthapati (postulation, derivation from circumstances), anupalabdhi (non-perception, negative, cognitive proof), and sabda (word, testimony of past or present reliable experts experts each of these are further categorized in terms of conditionality, completeness, confidence and possibility of error, by the different schools. The schools vary on how many of these six are valid paths of knowledge. For example, the Karvaka Nastika philosophy holds that only one perception is an epistemically reliable means of knowledge, the Samkhya school holds that three are perception, inference and testimony, while the Mimamsa and Advaita schools hold that all six are epistemically useful and reliable means to knowledge. Samkhya Samkhya is the oldest of the orthodox philosophical systems in Hinduism, with origins in the first millennium BCE. It is a rationalist school of Indian philosophy, and had a strong influence on other schools of Indian philosophies. Samkhya is an enumerationist philosophy whose epistemology accepted three of six pramanas as the only reliable means of gaining knowledge. These were pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, and sabda aptavakana, word testimony of reliable sources. Samkhya school espouses dualism between consciousness and matter. It regards the universe as consisting of two realities, purusa consciousness and prakriti matter. Jiva, a living being, is that state in which purusa is bonded to prakriti in some form. This fusion, state the Samkhya scholars, led to the emergence of buddhi awareness, intellect, and ahankara individualized ego consciousness, I maker. The universe is described by this school as one created by purusa prakriti entities infused with various permutations and combinations of variously enumerated elements, senses, feelings, activity and mind. Samkhya philosophy includes a theory of gunas qualities, innate tendencies, psyche. Guna, it states, are of three types, sattva being good, compassionate, illuminating, positive, and constructive, rajas guna is one of activity, chaotic, passion, impulsive, potentially good or bad, and tamas being the quality of darkness, ignorance, destructive, lethargic, negative. Everything, all life forms and human beings, state Samkhya scholars, have these three gunas, but in different proportions. The interplay of these gunas defines the character of someone or something, of nature and determines the progress of life. Samkhya theorizes a pluralism of souls jivatmas who possess consciousness, but denies the existence of Ishvara God. Classical Samkhya is considered an atheist or non-theistic Hindu philosophy. The Samkhya Karika, one of the key texts of this school of Hindu philosophy, opens by stating its goal to be three kinds of human suffering and means to prevent them. The text then presents a distillation of its theories on epistemology, metaphysics, axiology and soteriology. For example, it states, 
The soteriology in Samkhya aims at the realization of purusa as distinct from prakriti. This knowledge of the self is held to end transmigration and lead to absolute freedom, kaivalya. Topic: <laughs> Yoga In Indian philosophy, yoga is, among other things, the name of one of the six Astika philosophical schools. The yoga philosophical system aligns closely with the dualist premises of the Samkhya school. The yoga school accepts Samkhya psychology and metaphysics, but is considered theistic because it accepts the concept of personal God Ishvara, unlike Samkhya. The epistemology of the yoga school, like the Samkhya school, relies on three of six pramanas as the means of gaining reliable knowledge: prachaksa (perception), anumana (inference), and sabda (aptavakana (word). Testimony of reliable sources: the universe is conceptualized as a duality in yoga school, purusa (consciousness) and prakriti (matter). However, the yoga school discusses this concept more generically as seer, experiencer, and seen, experienced. Than the Samkhya school, a key text of the Yoga school is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Patanjali may have been, as Max Muller explains, the author or representative of the Yoga philosophy without being necessarily the author of the sutras. Hindu philosophy recognizes many types of yoga, such as Raja Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Tantra Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Laya Yoga, and Hatha Yoga. The Yoga school builds on the Samkhya school theory that Jnana knowledge is a sufficient means to moksha. It suggests that systematic techniques, practice, personal experimentation, combined with Samkhya's approach to knowledge, is the path to moksha. Yoga shares several central ideas with Advaita Vedanta, with the difference that yoga is a form of experimental mysticism while Advaita Vedanta is a form of monistic personalism. Like Advaita Vedanta, the yoga school of Hindu philosophy holds that liberation, freedom in this life is achievable, and that this occurs when an individual fully understands and realizes the equivalence of Atman soul, self, and Brahman. <laughs> The Vicesika philosophy is a naturalist school. It is a form of atomism in natural philosophy. It postulates that all objects in the physical universe are reducible to paramanu atoms, and that one's experiences are derived from the interplay of substance a function of atoms, their number and their spatial arrangements, quality, activity, commonness, particularity and inherence. Knowledge and liberation are achievable by complete understanding of the world of experience, according to Vicesika school. The Vicesika Darsana is credited to Kannada Kasyapa from the second half of the first millennium BCE. The foundational text, the Vicesika Sutra, opens as follows. Dharma is that from which results the accomplishment of exaltation and of the supreme good. The authoritativeness of the Veda arises from its being an exposition of Dharma. The supreme good results from knowledge, produced from a particular dharma, of the essence of the predicables, substance, attribute, action, genus, species and combination, by means of their resemblances and differences. The Vicesika school is related to the Naya school but features differences in its epistemology, metaphysics and ontology. The epistemology of the Vicesika school, like Buddhism, accepted only two means to knowledge as reliable, perception and inference. The Vicesika school and Buddhism both consider their respective scriptures as indisputable and valid means to knowledge, the difference being that the scriptures held to be a valid and reliable source by Vaisikas were the Vedas. Vicesika metaphysical premises are founded on a form of atomism, that reality is composed of four substances earth, water, air, and fire. Each of these four are of two types, atomic and composite. An atom is, according to Vicesika scholars, that which is indestructible anitya, indivisible, and has a special kind of dimension, called small anu. A composite, in this philosophy, is defined to be anything which is divisible into atoms. Whatever human beings perceive is composite, while atoms are invisible. The Vesikas stated that size, form, truths and everything that human beings experience as a whole is a function of atoms, their number and their spatial arrangements, their guna quality, karma activity, samanya commonness, vicesa particularity and amavaya inherence, inseparable connectedness of everything. Topic. Naya The Naya school is a realist astika philosophy. 
The school's most significant contributions to Indian philosophy were its systematic development of the theory of logic, methodology, and its treatises on epistemology. The foundational text of the Naya school is the Naya Sutras of the 1st millennium BCE. The text is credited to Aksapada Gautama and its composition is variously dated between the 6th and 2nd centuries BCE. Naya epistemology accepts four out of six pramanas as reliable means of gaining knowledge pratyaksa, perception, anumana, inference, upamana, comparison and analogy, and sabda, word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. In its metaphysics, the Naya school is closer to the Vaisesika school than the others. It holds that human suffering results from mistakes, defects produced by activity under wrong knowledge notions and ignorance. Moksha liberation, it states, is gained through right knowledge. This premise led Naya to concern itself with epistemology, that is, the reliable means to gain correct knowledge and to remove wrong notions. False knowledge is not merely ignorance to Nayayikas, it includes delusion. Correct knowledge is discovering and overcoming one's delusions, and understanding the true nature of the soul, self and reality. The Naya Sutras begin <laughs> Mimamsa The Mimamsa school emphasized hermeneutics and exegesis. It is a form of philosophical realism. Key texts of the Mimamsa school are the Purva Mimamsa Sutras of Jaimini. The classical Mimamsa school is sometimes referred to as Purvamimamsa or Karmamimamsa in reference to the first part of the Vedas. The Mimamsa school has several sub schools defined by epistemology. The Prabhakara sub school of Mimamsa accepted five means to gaining knowledge as epistemetically reliable Pratyaksa, perception, Anumana, inference, Upamana, comparison and analogy, Arthapati, postulation, derivation from circumstances, and Sabda, word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. The Kumarila Bhatta sub-school of Mimamsa added a sixth way of knowing to its canon of reliable epistemology, Anupalabdi non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. The metaphysics of the Mimamsa school consists of both atheistic and theistic doctrines, and the school showed little interest in systematic examination of the existence of God. Rather, it held that the soul is an eternal, omnipresent, inherently active spiritual essence, then focused on the epistemology and metaphysics of Dharma. To them, dharma meant rituals and duties, not devas gods, because devas existed only in name. The Mimamsakas held that the Vedas are eternal authorless infallible, that Vedic vidi injunctions and mantras in rituals are prescriptive karya actions, and that the rituals are of primary importance and merit. They considered the Upanishads and other texts related to self knowledge and spirituality to be of secondary importance, a philosophical view that the Vedanta school disagreed with. Mimamsa gave rise to the study of philology and the philosophy of language. While their deep analysis of language and linguistics influenced other schools, their views were not shared by others. Mimamsakas considered the purpose and power of language was to clearly prescribe the proper, correct, and right. In contrast, Vedantins extended the scope and value of language as a tool to also describe, develop and derive. Mimamsakas considered orderly, law-driven, procedural life as the central purpose and noblest necessity of dharma and society, and divine theistic sustenance means to that end. The Mimamsa school was influential and foundational to the Vedanta school, with the difference that Mimamsa developed and emphasized karmakanda the portion of the sruti which relates to ceremonial acts and sacrificial rites, the early parts of the Vedas, while the Vedanta school developed and emphasized jnanakanda the portion of the Vedas which relates to knowledge of monism, the latter parts of the Vedas. <laughs> Vedanta The Vedanta school built upon the teachings of the Upanishads and Brahma Sutras from the 1st millennium BCE and is the most developed and best known of the Hindu schools. The epistemology of the Vedantins included, depending on the sub-school, five or six methods as proper and reliable means of gaining any form of knowledge, pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, upamana comparison and analogy, arthapati postulation, derivation from circumstances, anupalabdi non-perception, negative, cognitive proof and sabda word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. All of these have been further categorized by each sub-school of Vedanta in terms of conditionality, completeness, confidence and possibility of error. The emergence of Vedanta school represented a period when a more knowledge-centered understanding began to emerge. 
These focused on jnana-driven aspects of the Vedic religion and the Upanishads. This included metaphysical concepts such as Atman and Brahman, and an emphasis on meditation, self-discipline, self-knowledge and abstract spirituality, rather than ritualism. The Upanishads were variously interpreted by ancient and medieval era Vedanta scholars. Consequently, the Vedanta separated into many sub-schools, ranging from theistic dualism to non-theistic monism, each interpreting the texts in its own way and producing its own series of sub-commentaries. Advaita Advaita literally means, not to, soul, unity. It is a sub-school of Vedanta, and asserts spiritual and universal non-dualism. Its metaphysics is a form of absolute monism, that is all ultimate reality is interconnected oneness. This is the oldest and most widely acknowledged Vedantic school. The foundational texts of this school are the Brahma Sutras and the early Upanishads from the first millennium BCE. Its first great consolidator was the 8th century scholar Adi Shankara, who continued the line of thought of the Upanishadic teachers, and that of his teacher's teacher Gaudapada. He wrote extensive commentaries on the major Vedantic scriptures and is celebrated as one of the major Hindu philosophers from whose doctrines the main currents of modern Indian thought are derived. According to this school of Vedanta, all reality is Brahman, and there exists nothing whatsoever which is not Brahman. Its metaphysics includes the concept of Maya and Atman. Maya connotes that which exists, but is constantly changing and thus is spiritually unreal. The empirical reality is considered as always changing and therefore, "...transitory, incomplete, misleading and not what it appears to be." The concept of Atman is of soul, self within each person, each living being. Advaita Vedantins assert that Atman is same as Brahman, and this Brahman is within each human being and all life, all living beings are spiritually interconnected, and there is oneness in all of existence. They hold that dualities and misunderstanding of maya as the spiritual reality that matters is caused by ignorance, and are the cause of sorrow, suffering. Jivanmukti liberation during life can be achieved through self-knowledge, the understanding that Atman within is same as Atman in another person and all of Brahman, the eternal, unchanging, entirety of cosmic principles and true reality. Visistadvaita <inaudible> <inaudible> Ramanuja was the foremost proponent of the philosophy of Visistadvaita or qualified non-dualism. Visistadvaita advocated the concept of a supreme being with essential qualities or attributes. Visistadvaitans argued against the Advaitin conception of Brahman as an impersonal empty oneness. They saw Brahman as an eternal oneness, but also as the source of all creation, which was omnipresent and actively involved in existence. To them the sense of subject-object perception was illusory and a sign of ignorance. However, the individual's sense of self was not a complete illusion since it was derived from the universal beingness that is Brahman. Ramanuja saw Vishnu as a personification of Brahman. Dvaita Dvaita refers to a theistic sub-school in Vedanta tradition of Hindu philosophy. Also called as Tattvavada and Bimbapratibhambavada, the Dvaita sub-school was founded by the 13th century scholar Madhvacharya. The Dvaita Vedanta school believes that God Vishnu, Supreme Soul, and the individual souls Jivatman exist as independent realities, and these are distinct. Dvaita Vedanta is a dualistic interpretation of the Vedas, espouses dualism by theorizing the existence of two separate realities. The first and the only independent reality, states the Dvaita school, is that of Vishnu or Brahman. Vishnu is the supreme self, in a manner similar to monotheistic god in other major religions. The distinguishing factor of Dvaita philosophy, as opposed to monistic Advaita Vedanta, is that God takes on a personal role and is seen as a real eternal entity that governs and controls the universe. Like Vishishtadvaita Vedanta subschool, Dvaita philosophy also embraced Vaishnavism, with the metaphysical concept of Brahman in the Vedas identified with Vishnu and the one and only Supreme Being. However, unlike Vishishtadvaita which envisions ultimate qualified nondualism, the dualism of Dvaita was permanent. Salvation, in Dvaita, is achievable only through the grace of God Vishnu. Dvaitadvaita 
Dvaita Veda was proposed by Nimbarka, a 13th century Vaishnava philosopher from the Andhra region. According to this philosophy, there are three categories of existence Brahman, soul, and matter. Soul and matter are different from Brahman in that they have attributes and capacities different from Brahman. Brahman exists independently, while soul and matter are dependent. Thus soul and matter have an existence that is separate yet dependent. Further, Brahman is a controller, the soul is the enjoyer, and matter the thing enjoyed. Also, the highest object of worship is Krishna and his consort Radha, attended by thousands of gopis, of the Vrindavan, and devotion consists in self-surrender. Suddhadvaita Suddhadvaita is the purely non-dual philosophy propounded by Vallabha Acharya The founding philosopher was also the guru of the Vallabha Sampradaya tradition of Vallabha, or Pustamurga, a Vaishnava tradition focused on the worship of Krishna. Vallabhacharya enunciates that Brahman has created the world without connection with any external agency such as Maya which itself is his power and manifests himself through the world. That is why Shuddhadvaita is known as unmodified transformation or avakarta paranamavada. Brahman or Ishvara desired to become many, and he became the multitude of individual souls and the world. The jagat or Maya is not false or illusionary, the physical material world is. Vallabha recognizes Brahman as the whole and the individual as a part but devoid of bliss like sparks and fire. Asintya Beta Abeda Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated that the soul or energy of God is both distinct and non-distinct from God, whom he identified as Krishna, Govinda, and that this, although unthinkable, may be experienced through a process of loving devotion bhakti. He followed the Dvaita concept of Madhvacharya. This philosophy of inconceivable oneness and difference. Karvaka. The Karvaka school is one of the Nastika or heterodox philosophies. It rejects supernaturalism, emphasizes materialism and philosophical skepticism, holding empiricism, perception and conditional inference as the proper source of knowledge. Karvaka is an atheistic school of thought. It holds that there is neither afterlife nor rebirth, all existence is mere combination of atoms and substances, feelings and mind are an epiphenomenon, and free will exists. Burhaspati is sometimes referred to as the founder of Karvaka also called Lokayata philosophy. Much of the primary literature of Karvaka, the Barhaspatya Sutras ca. 600 BCE, however, are missing or lost. Its theories and development has been compiled from historic secondary literature such as those found in the Shastras, Sutras and the Indian epic poetry as well as from the texts of Buddhism and from Jain literature. One of the widely studied principles of Karvaka philosophy was its rejection of inference as a means to establish valid, universal knowledge, and metaphysical truths. In other words, the Karvaka epistemology states that whenever one infers a truth from a set of observations or truths, one must acknowledge doubt, inferred knowledge is conditional. <laughs> Shaivism Early history of Shaivism is difficult to determine. However, the Svetasvatara Upanishad BCE is considered to be the earliest textual exposition of a systematic philosophy of Shaivism. Shaivism is represented by various philosophical schools, including non-dualist dualist Beda, and non-dualist with dualist perspectives. Vidyaranya in his works mentions three major schools of Shaiva thought — Pashapata Shaivism, Shaiva Siddhanta and Pratyabhijña Kashmir Shaivism. Topic. Pasupatha Shaivism Pasupatha Shaivism Pasupatha, of Pasupati, is the oldest of the major Shaiva schools. The philosophy of Pashapata sect was systematized by Lakulish in the 2nd century CE. Pasu in Pasupati refers to the effect or created world, the word designates that which is dependent on something ulterior. Whereas, Pati means the cause or principium, the word designates the Lord, who is the cause of the universe, the Pati, or the ruler. 
Pashapatas disapproved of Vaishnava theology, known for its doctrine servitude of souls to the Supreme Being, on the grounds that dependence upon anything could not be the means of cessation of pain and other desired ends. They recognized that those depending upon another and longing for independence will not be emancipated because they still depend upon something other than themselves. According to Pasipadas, soul possesses the attributes of the supreme deity when it becomes liberated from the germ of every pine. Pasipadas divided the created world into the insentient and the sentient. The insentient was the unconscious and thus dependent on the sentient or conscious. The insentient was further divided into effects and causes. The effects were of ten kinds, the earth, four elements and their qualities, color etc. The causes were of thirteen kinds, the five organs of cognition, the five organs of action, the three internal organs, intellect, the ego principle and the cognizing principle. These insentient causes were held responsible for the elusive identification of self with non-self. Salvation in Pasupatha involved the union of the soul with God through the intellect. Shaiva Siddhanta Considered normative tantric Shaivism, Shaiva Siddhanta provides the normative rites, cosmology and theological categories of tantric Shaivism. Being a dualistic philosophy, the goal of Shaiva Siddhanta is to become an ontologically distinct Shiva through Shiva's grace. This tradition later merged with the Tamil Seva movement and expression of concepts of Shaiva Siddhanta can be seen in the Bhakti poetry of the Nayanars. Kashmir Shaivism Kashmir Shaivism arose during the 8th or 9th century CE in Kashmir and made significant strides, both philosophical and theological, until the end of the 12th century CE. It is categorized by various scholars as monistic idealism, absolute idealism, theistic monism, realistic idealism, transcendental physicalism, or concrete monism. It is a school of Savism consisting of Trika and its philosophical articulation Pratyabhijña, even though, both Kashmir Shaivism and Advaita Vedanta are non-dual philosophies which give primacy to universal consciousness chit or Brahman, in Kashmir Shaivism, as opposed to Advaita, all things are a manifestation of this consciousness. This implies that from the point of view of Kashmir Shaivism, the phenomenal world sakti is real, and it exists and has its being in consciousness chit. Whereas, Advaita holds that Brahman is an active niskriya and the phenomenal world is an illusion maya. The objective of human life, according to Kashmir Shaivism, is to merge in Shiva or universal consciousness, or to realize one's already existing identity with Shiva, by means of wisdom, yoga and grace. See also Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Topic Further reading Radhakrishnan, Sarvpali, and more, Charles A. A. Source Book in Indian Philosophy, Princeton University Press, 1957. Princeton Paperback 12th edition, 1989. ISBN 0-691-01958-4. Rambachan, Anantanand. The Advaita Worldview, God, World and Humanity. 2006. Zilberman, David B., The Birth of Meaning in Hindu Thought. D. Rydell Publishing Company, Dordrecht, Holland, 1988. ISBN 90-277-2497-0. Chapter 1. Hindu systems of thought as epistemic disciplines. Topic: External links. Media related to Hindu philosophy at Wikimedia Commons.